Welcome to the Stonebridge Jail. Do you have business with the incarcerated? Isn't running a jail a bit complicated for an automaton? I apologize, but I was not designed to answer questions of a remedial nature. I repeat, do you have business with the incarcerated? I'd like to speak to the Krug prisoner. Fiddlewick asked me to appraise the situation and determine the Krug's fate. Very well. It is Meister Fiddlewick's prerogative to entrust such decisions to strangers rather than automated constables with decades of experience. Please note that the Krug has been in prison for its own safety. It is highly unpopular with citizens, especially those who own pitchforks. Kerr. How did you wind up behind these bars? Kerr. Kerr. Can you understand what I'm saying? Kerr. <coughs> ah, yes. Sorry about that. I've been having a terrible bout of phlegm lately. Yes, I can understand you perfectly. Why wouldn't I? Just promise me you won't do that thing where you talk slower and louder. <coughs> that never works. You're pretty well spoken for a Krug. A Krug? <coughs> yeah, I guess that's what people think I am. I'm human. Just some ill twist of fate made me hideous and homely. People seem to think you're a Krug. Why haven't you said something and corrected the situation? I'm tired of being harassed and assaulted. This time I decided I'd let them think I'm a monster and keep me locked up. <laughs> I've thought about getting out of here, but I have nowhere to go. I'm content to just stay here and daydream. I have to decide whether you stay or go free. <laughs> Well, I suppose I've committed no crime, unless being hideous is illegal. But if it's all the same to you, I'm safe here. Let them go on thinking I'm a Krug. It won't hurt my feelings. If you let me go, have someone escort me out of the city, at least. to the Stonebridge Jail. Do you have business with the incarcerated? I've come to a decision on the Krug. I will enact whatever outcome you deem appropriate. Please enunciate carefully. He's no Krug. He's a human. He should be released and given the full rights and protections of a legal citizen. Very well. The Krug will be set loose and monitored for his protection until he has integrated with the city or been stoned to death by angry mobs. <laughs> they sure do throw rocks awful hard. I wasn't certain that the Legion had truly returned, but after witnessing your resolution of the plight of the oppressed Krug proletariat, it caused a great imbalance in my sanguine humors. Fairly had me bursting with them. <laughs> now then, we have much to accomplish. Shall we get started? What in the world are you talking about? Oh my, do forgive me. I mistook you for a collegium woman. I meant only that it made me proud, whilst at the same time risking distempers of the blood. Now then, much to do, much to do. Shall we be off? What do you mean by we have much to do? Who exactly are you? Yes, we. First person plural, in this case collective. I could lend you this excellent book on grammar, but wait, I'm forgetting my manners. I am Reinhard Manx, scholar, inventor, and sartorial adventurer. I have degrees in advanced thaumaturgical studies and non-Goblinian geometry. Naturally, I also have a grounding in the classics, but more importantly to you, I am descended from the Grand Mage Merrick, a legionnaire through and through. That would make him Merrick's last descendant, then. In the old stories, Merrick was always more interested in making magic than, well, children. Well, needless to say, it's been my dream to reunite with other children of the Tenth Legion. 
second only to the dream of a thaumaturgical waistcoat that can change its color and cut to match the latest season's fashions. If you have Legion blood, why didn't you join us at the Gathering? Oh, you mean the invitation calculated to lure all the Legion descendants into one place? <laughs> you must be joking. That was obviously a trap. One would have to be suicidal, or at least a great buffoon, to walk into that sort of setup. Oh. Oh my, do forgive me. I, I should have realized. I, I meant no offense. But in any case, no, I regretfully declined when that letter arrived. You said you were a scholar. But have you seen any combat? I'm hardly the mage that my great-grandfather was, but I was best in my class when it came to channeling and energy manipulation. I may possess a physique best described as suity, but by application of higher non-Goblinian mathematics, I could rip a man in half with a thought. Well, uh, theoretically I could. It's not as though I practice on people. That would be rather rude, and mildly illegal, but mostly rude. How have you lived in Stonebridge all this time? I thought this town had a bad history with the Legion. Had I trumpeted my lineage, we would have seen democracy in action. The ballot would have been whether I would be lynched or dissected, but still... I used to dream that the Legion would rise up from the ashes. But I also dream of square circles, so make of that what you will. The people of Stonebridge may have committed a terrible crime against the Legion, but I think it's time to forgive and rebuild. Forgiveness is an old virtue of the Legion. I'd say your heart is in the right place. In all my studies of time, I found that you can coil it, twist it, bend it, but it always unwinds the same way. Hatred can't undo the past, so why hold a grudge? Why bother defending Ebb if you can't accept that its people will make mistakes? And of course, forgiveness facilitates the open exchange of ideas. It's hard to have a symposium with a lynch mob. We need everyone in the Legion to join forces. Are you with us? Am I with you? Does the thaumaturgical constant Q trend towards infinity for given values of the human soul? The answer is yes, by the way. The Legion needs to stand together, lest we fade into memory. So without further ado, let's be off. I should thank you for resolving the matter of the Krug. Such a small issue, but it required an outside voice. Do you have another problem for me to mediate? Yes, I do. Baron 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 is a wealthy landowner with a claim to many parcels of land here in town. He wants to charge rent to Hans. Hans has an equally compelling claim to the plot of land. Mudgutter informs me it's a case of eminent domain versus original acquisition. With the court deadlocked, both have agreed to let you settle their dispute. I'll have them meet you at the Chapter House. Step right up, friend. I've got all manner of weapons and gear.
I'll speak to them. Be advised, the wise and beneficent. Meister Castle asked us to end the work stoppage in the foundry. I apologize. I do not comprehend the terms work stoppage, general strike, or free will. I will let you pass now. In the future, we will avoid this topic of conversation. Enjoy your time in the foundry. interest you in a lightly used stray cat as a memento of your time in Stonebridge. Please comply with all local laws and customs. Did you hear? The foundry's gone silent, and no one knows why. Hello there, friends. Looking for anything in particular? How is business on this side of town? <sighs> it's a living, but not by much. Can't turn my back for a minute or folks seem to wander off with my goods. But don't let my ranting and rambling ruin your day. Give a holler if you want something. This place is oddly quiet, with all our machines shut down. I wonder what's going on in the foundry. I think I need another drink. many fingers would you say a person really needs? Oh, no reason. Pardon me, I'm still a bit jumpy. What with the Cyclops revolt? Sorry, my friends, the foundry is closed for an undefined amount of time. We do regret any inconvenience this may cause. Meister Castle told us that your Cyclops workers have taken over the foundry. The Cyclopses have gone mad. They've killed a few of our foremen, and the gears of the Foundry have stopped. We spotted goblin agitators inside as well. And if that wasn't enough, the fire elementals that power our furnaces have gotten loose. I need to ask you a few questions before I go inside. Of course, anything. Just ask. How exactly did these Cyclopses get into the Foundry in the first place? Oh, they've been here for years. And in all this time, they've tirelessly tended the Foundry without complaint or commotion. 
This caught us all by surprise. One moment they were working peacefully, the next, wanton violence. These goblin agitators you mentioned, do you know who hired them, or what their plan is? They wore no official heraldry and made no statements of allegiance. We give tours of the Foundry, I'm sure that's how they got in. The Cyclopses haven't killed them, so for all we know, they're working together. Perhaps they incited this madness. Do you have any idea why your workers would take over the Foundry? The Night Foreman? The man in charge when this uprising began? I'm afraid he's dead. All our efforts have gone into evacuating the wounded and making sure the Cyclopses don't escape into the city. We're short on facts. We're ready to help. What would you have us do? Our attempts to parlay have ended in bloodshed. You'll need to pacify them by force. I don't want the Cyclopses eliminated. I just want them to go back to work. So find their leader and humble him. The sooner the Foundry is back in operation, the better. If you can restart any of the gear works below, that would also be a great help. Step cautious there, Legionnaire. Several of my men never made it out of the Foundry. I've seen fire jackals down there glowing so hot, even the Cyclopses can't control the beasts. Probably stating the obvious, but let's avoid these burning grates.
They've locked up those fire jackets. Maybe they'll cause some trouble if we let them out. 